Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to Think for Yourself versus Believe in Doctrines. This is something I absolutely believe. Also, this was a request. Yes, please do think for yourself. Even if you want to believe in the doctrines, please read it completely. Make sure it makes sense to you. Make sure you can back up what you believe. Now, if you cannot back up what you believe, you can say, I believe in it, but I have no proof in it. Um, that, to me, it's like... <clears throat> it's like to say... Uh, Right here, there is a nitrogen gas right here. I don't know that for absolute sure. There's a higher, so I believe there's a hydrogen gas trapped between my two fingers, but I don't know for sure. It's highly probable, but it's just that I cannot definitively say for sure, therefore I cannot necessarily enforce that there is I cannot confirm with 100% confidence that there is a nitrogen gas caught between my fingertips. But I believe there is. There's a difference there. So, but again, overall though, I don't know for sure, but I believe there is. There's a high chance of it being there, and uh, I believe it more than there is not, because I think the air is actually consistent of like 60% nit nitrogen, I believe, <laughs> which is honestly amazing whenever I first heard that. I think it's 60%, don't quote me on that, but again, Think for yourself, research for yourself, don't take anything I say as the absolute truth. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. You have to be a light to yourself, not the light of a professor or an analyst or a psychologist or, or the light of Jesus or the light of the Buddha. You have to be a light to yourself in a world that is utterly becoming dark. Uh, sorry, Apostle, <laughs> but I, yeah, absolutely. You must be able. You cannot. You must be able to believe in the things. You must be able to believe in the things that you believe. That's weird to say. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is, don't just take someone else's word for it. Don't believe in what someone else tells you. You must do the research to find out whether you believe in that or not. Don't just say, oh, I believe this exists because someone else says it. What I what I can say is that, oh, I've heard someone say this, and it seems probable, but I don't know for sure. Or, um, you know, so far I've heard many people say it, so I tend to believe it a little bit, but again, I cannot confirm it. The underlying fact is the fact that because you didn't do the research yourself, that you have to, in a sense, acknowledge the fact that you don't know for sure. And even when you do the research, it's never always guaranteed, but at least you can with confidence say that out of all the research that I've done and the experience that I've had, I I've, I've tend to believe in this. Because nothing is necessarily absolute in, in most instances. Nothing is necessarily absolute. Human intellect has sparked like never before. Mm -hmm. No, no, don't look so complimented. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's true that more people can think for themselves today than ever before in the history of humanity. Uh, I, I'm starting to doubt that now. <laughs> but I'm sure that's true though, but it feels like it's not though. That's, the, that's a bad thing when it feels like it's not. Whether they're thinking right or not, that's a big question. Okay. But at least they're thinking something. Okay, 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 okay. You got you. Okay, made a point. So once human <laughs> intellect fires like this, and it will continue in the coming years, you can't stop it, then solutions for life in another place is not going to work. Because I want you to understand, with all due respect to all the great scriptures on the planet, most of the scriptures on the, on the planet cannot withstand two logical questions. If you ask two questions, it will collapse. Whoa! What are those two questions? It can remain sacred and up there only as long as you prevent it from asking these questions. Okay. These questions are taboo. These questions are sacrilege, you're not supposed to ask them. Only as long as you do not ask these questions, they float in very sacred space. If you ask two questions, it'll collapse. 
entire philosophies, belief systems, religious processes, everything will collapse with two questions, majority of it. There are a few things which will stand, of course. These two questions, only a few rare human beings asked in the past or till now. Just simple questions, that's all. She's like teasing the crap out of us. I'm trying to think what those two questions can be. Entire philosophies and belief systems will collapse? Holy crap! What are the two questions? Answer no, answers not needed, just questions for which there are no answers in any book. <laughs> so these questions are being raised because it's very natural for human intellect to come up with these questions unless it's heavily indoctrinated. The way religious extremism is spreading in the world, the way things are happening, it looks hopeless. Uh, not in my view. The more extreme it gets, the more these questions will pop up in people's minds. I certainly hope you're right. Most… there's a… extreme is getting more extreme it seems. I don't think necessarily that the media… I mean, today the people are connected in many ways, devices, Twitter and devices and apps, cell phones and apps. Now, I know there's been extremism in the past and, you know, communications with device, cell phones and apps have not been so good as it has been today. So ex extremism have existed in the past and it may not have been very present in the mainstream because, again, we didn't, we didn't really have or didn't have the cell phones back in that time. But now cell phones are more prevalent throughout society and is this to say that, oh, you know, we have the same amount of extremism as we did in the past, it's just that we can see it now. While that may be true, but I have a feeling that because of social media apps, that it is growing at more of an exponential, or at least growing, exponentially or not, I don't know. I do feel that it is growing more so than it was ever before because of these apps. So... Again, it goes it goes both ways, both the extremes left and extremes right, and it's and these apps, in a sense, helps develop those things. Again, and I and I go back to the fact that an app is but a tool, a tool to be used for good or for bad. So we can't blame the apps, we can't blame the devices. These are just tools for us to use. It's a matter of the individual to take responsibility for how to use those devices, those tools. <sighs> Human intellect is being nurtured in so many different ways. Not all the things that come out of this intellect are going to be pleasant. Lots of unpleasantness will come. That's... But one <laughs> thing will happen. All the established so-called solutions will collapse people will want an answer at some point out of sheer frustration. Because initially intellect will turn you into an atheist, it's a natural consequence, you know. <laughs> when your logic starts asking questions, you naturally become an atheist. Hold on, I, I, I mean, I, I want to believe him on that, but I think there are some people that I've seen who are scientists who… who uh <laughs> who do this. I'm like, it doesn't make sense in my head. I'm like, how are you a scientist and yet still are, believe in God? It's like, and what he does, what he says, he compartmentalizes. Basically, he, he doesn't question reli his religious beliefs, but he questions everything in science. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really weird. If there's a conflict between the science and its belief, he just keeps it separate. Beliefs are beliefs and science is science, no touchy. And I'm like, ah, I mean, you know, if that works for that person, again, again, doesn't matter. You can believe what you want to believe so long as you're not forcing it on anyone else by all means. If it makes you a better person, please keep on believing because uh, we need good people in the world. Just don't shove it down people's throats. If they want to talk to you about it, please do share your knowledge on uh, your belief system. 
but don't force it anyone don't force your beliefs on anyone else as your logic evolves further you will understand the childishness of being atheist or theist for that matter then you will want genuine answers the evolution of human intellect will naturally lead to solutions from within I hope then so. the methods and technologies that yoga has to offer will become of phenomenal significance religion is uh, has an interesting approach both in the isha foundation and in your work in your Sorry, sorry. I wish he said it, but he just teased those two questions. I'm like, what are those two questions? Because I would have, I would have loved to just know what those two questions are, to see if I can't answer it for myself, or to see if my mind will explode right live on camera. Well, not live, but pre-recorded on camera. You promote what we could call it religious universality. Uh, in other words, you have a more secular approach, and yet religion in many parts of the world, or in the name of religion. we have conflict and all sorts of negative things happen what is your message on religious tolerance and coexistence tolerating somebody is a horrible thing oh sure <laughs> welcome <laughs> he, he uh, you know uh, i wish i uh, i miss osho I miss reacting and watching his videos. I haven't watched any of his videos ever since I had to stop it. But I think I I don't want to take a risk because again I'm a very small channel and and I don't know if my channel has to change because of recent events too. So brace yourself, I guess. But yeah, I, before I thought tolerance was a good thing. You know, we tolerate each other to a degree. We always we tolerate people, uh, and I don't necessarily believe that to be a bad thing. like you can never you, you will never 100% agree with everything with someone no matter how close of a friend you are there will be always one thing you disagree on whether you put ketchup on on uh on um uh broccoli or mustard because there's no other options no 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 only ketchup and mustard that is it anything else is blasphemy <laughs> <laughs> But you get my point, you know. It's just, it's just you will never agree one hundred percent, and you. It's not really saying you're tolerating it because how small that is a toleration. That's just a preference. But we all kind of have that preference, though. We then you may think that's insignificant, but because it doesn't matter that much, but it's still nonetheless a toleration. I do believe. I do believe. But I think a lot of people think of toleration or tolerance as something a bit more. a grand like uh religious beliefs or political beliefs or um whatever other beliefs that mean a lot more than whether you're ketchup or mustard and nothing else goes on broccoli you know that is such a minute thing by comparison but it's still a disagreement in terms of what you can put on a food a disagreement it is in magnitudes more significant the political disagreements than uh ketchup or mustard on a broccoli <laughs> But uh yes, and I always thought tolerance is a good thing. We tolerate each other. But Osho said no, tolerance is terrible. I'm like he's right. <laughs> I can't believe that. I've always thought it it's always told and not always told, but it's it's told in in at least around what what I've heard and experienced as to be a good thing to tolerate people in a sense, tolerance, acceptance, accept people for who they are. I I've didn't necessarily agree with. I don't have to accept everything a person is. I can not accept some things and accept a lot of things. It's just a matter of how much of an acceptance I can tolerate. Oh God. To keep that person as a, a friend or keep that person as someone I talk to. But yeah, never ever thought tolerance is a bad thing, but There goes Sadguru. This is the first time I ever heard Sadguru say tolerating someone is a horrible thing. I heard Osho say it. The first time I heard Sadguru say it. You realize that your spouse is just tolerating you. Oof. Horrible, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> If they chucked you out, it would be okay. But they tolerated you. This is the worst insult. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> Religious tolerance we're talking about. this these things won't last if we talk tolerance because how long can you tolerate somebody sorry i pause again because i can't remember there's a there was a shirt that has the symbols of most or all of the religious uh major uh, world religion 
does it say tolerance or tolerate on there or no coexist is that a different word for tolerance it kind of might be Ooh. i thought that was a pretty cool shirt now if i'm associating coexistence with tolerance that might be, i might not want, i was thinking about uh, i don't know i was gonna say think about getting that shirt but not really it will become so irritating after some time, you will want to do something terrible to them. <laughs> and invariably they've been doing always. <laughs> we must understand this, essentially to belong to a certain religion, you must believe something. So, if we work hard enough on you from your childhood, we can make you believe just about anything. Yes. It's time. Sorry, that's the reason why I do. I've heard um, a lot of church say, "Teach them while they're young, indoctrinate them while they're young, because they'll believe anything." It's time. If you don't do it, if you do it, it'll be great. If you don't do it, anyway, your children will do it. This is. You must come to this much sincerity within you. What I know, I know. What I do not know, I do not know. Is this okay with you? Yes. Right now, the condition of human societies are, whatever I do not know, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Belief gives you confidence, this is the problem. Confidence without clarity is a disaster on this planet. So, uh, I want to say that I, I do say I believe a lot of things, but it's not with confidence. That's the thing. It is, I say I believe in things because I have experience or have I've personally experienced either someone saying something or experienced it myself that I say I have some belief in it. I, I would just generally say I believe in something. It's not to say I believe in it with confidence because I, I don't believe, I will not necessarily believe in things with confidence if I don't have a lot of experience or knowledge in it. So to say that I, I, uh, Oh my gosh, what the heck happened to all my stuff here? Well, I know, I know, I, oh here it is. So, I believe this is a pen. I am quite confident this is a freaking pen here. As a matter of fact, I'm 100% confident this is a pen. Although, <laughs> I feel kind of, I question that now, but, but nonetheless, I am, I, I, I'm quite confident that this is a pen, so I can say that. I'm quite, I'm, I am quite confident there's no money in this gift card, <laughs> but I could be wrong. I, I do believe, no, I, I don't believe there's any money in that gift card, but I could be wrong. Again, a belief, I don't say with 100% confidence, but I do have some belief in it, which I actually, I'm right though, because I did check that. If you had clarity, you would do things in a certain way, mm -hmm. but you have no clarity, but you have confidence. Yeah. See, this is the whole thing. If you do something stupid right now, if you go home, your intelligence will bother you. This is the nature of human intelligence, why did I do this? <laughs> but the moment your stupidity is either scripture endorsed or God endorsed, you can go on doing the same idiotic thing with utmost confidence without ever turning back for a moment. Yep. Because you believe. Yes. So why can't we become sincere enough in our lives, what we know, we know, what we do not know, we do not know with all due respect to everybody? Yes? If you do this, then you will see, it is in the nature of human intelligence to seek. If you see, I do not know, you will want to know, you will long to know, you will seek to know, and the possibility of knowing is right here. Otherwise, you will believe and you will destroy all possibilities of knowing. You must understand the immensity of I do not know. How much ever knowledge you have, it is a minuscule in this cosmos. But your ignorance is limitless, isn't it? <laughs> if you identify with your ignorance, which is a very good thing, believe me. If you identify with your ignorance, you will constantly have an active intelligence which will look at everything carefully. But if you believe, you can go completely insensitive without paying attention to anything. It doesn't matter 
whether you do namaz or puja or bhajan or dhyan, we have to drink water. <laughs> so all of us who drink water must do something about this because in this land, tomorrow if our children have to live well, it's very important that our river should flow. Okay. So absolutely, again, whenever I say believe, I, there, again, definitions of word matters a lot, and sometimes definitions means different for different people. Like spirit, for example, with uh, Richard Dawkins, how, I think it's Deepak, I believe, can't remember that dude's name, but I'll call him the crazy guy, because he was crazy to me at first, but now I understand him completely. <laughs> so he doesn't, he's not as crazy, although he does seem kind of crazy, but that's why I kind of like him, honestly. But anyways like the word he uses spirit and Richard Dawkins and this other guy that was off camera just could not get past that and I understand again that was my perspective when I first watched that video not when I reacted reacted was my second time doing it but yeah I was like dude this dude what does he mean talking about spirit because in the western world spirit has a very strong definition so it's very difficult for people to get past that not everyone of course it was for me and it was for Richard Dawkins I mean Richard Dawkins could probably look past that but it has to be called something else though which to some, you know I, I understand I understand so to me belief is more along the line saying I still don't know I, whenever I say I believe something that means I don't know a hundred percent it still falls into I don't know, but it's just a matter of whether I know more on the I know side or less on the uh, I don't or more on the I don't know side. Or I would say I would not believe. So that's the more on the I don't know side versus I believe where it's more on the I know side. It's not to say that I know, it's just to say that I have experience with it or I've heard other people say it to kind of help confirm my belief on it, but it's not absolute. All right. Anyways, I talked too much. Um, that's uh, my reaction for Think for Yourself versus Believe in Doctrines. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.